Here to welcome Gino to the Hall of Fame is Dr. Jack Ramsey. Ladies and gentlemen, Gino Oriema. I am really, really, really nervous. I'm usually not nervous, um, but I'm really, really nervous. Uh, and I'm going to keep it short because, well, when you see who's following me, you'll know why. Um, part, of the, part of this whole thing, uh, I think everyone's mentioned the class that we're going in, and uh, I, I like to close my eyes, you know, and I like to take something from everybody in this class. I really would. I would like to, I would like to have Dave's vision, you know, just wake up and be able to see what he sees every day. And I'd like to have Dominique's ability to do things that most human beings can't do. And I'd like to have Sandro's style, you know, he's got that Italian style to him, you know. And, and, I, and I would love to have Joe's class and dignity and inner strength that he portrays. And I would like to have Charles's money. <laughs> that, that he's lost over his lifetime. And after all is said and done, I'd like to wake up and be Jerry Colangelo or somebody like that, you know? But when I was growing up, uh, um, you know, basketball for me was not really something that I could aspire to be as a, as a player. Uh, things keep, you know, kept getting in the way when I wanted to, to be a good player. Uh, my ability, number one. Um, but I never lost that love of the game that I acquired when, um, when I got to high school. And, uh, and I was living in Philadelphia. It was at a time when so many great coaches were living in the area. And I think that the person that I always associated with being the father of those coaches and the person who all the coaches wanted to emulate and be like was someone who I thought really epitomized the teacher coach, the, the faculty member who coached, the person who was a teacher before they became a coach, as opposed to today when coaches are entrepreneurs who coach. Uh, and that person is someone that I always wanted to be like when I grew up, and someone that I'm fortunate enough now to call one of my friends who's brought me into the St. Joe's family and made me a hawk by association and someone that I've admired all my life and will continue to for as long as I live, and that's Jack Ramsey. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it is very humbling uh, when, when you're standing up here and you're trying to think about the things that have gotten you to, to this point. And, um, you know, as Joe said, I think we're a reflection of our families and, and where we grew up and, and the way we were raised and the experiences that we had as, as children and the people we associated with. And um, for me, all my friends, and, and you can't name them all, but the, the guys I grew up with and those that allowed me to play, uh, those that drove me around, my family didn't have a car, you know. so. Uh, I was a real good teammate because, you know, if you drive me to the game, I'll pass you the ball. I mean, it was because <laughs> I didn't have a way of getting to the games. Uh, so I had lots of guys who really took me under their wing. And um, my high school coach, Bud Garler, allowed me to play on the team. And um, I said, you know, if, if, if I can be part of a team the rest of my life, then I'm going to be a lucky guy. And I've tried to do that all my life, is be part of a team. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, 
to work with uh, people that uh, allow me to, to, to do what I love to do, and that's teach and coach. Um, you know, Jim Foster first, and then uh, Phil Martelli and Debbie Ryan. Um, and then I, you know, was able to go and do my own thing at Connecticut. And Connecticut's the only place I've ever been a head coach, and Connecticut's the only place where uh, uh, I've been able to grow as a, uh, as a person, as a teacher, as a coach, uh, make mistakes early on, make mistakes in the middle, make some mistakes even now at the end. But through and through, I, I've never lost sight of the fact that it is just a game, and it is a bunch of people trying to get together to accomplish something that individually you can't do by yourself. And again, my players, the, there's a bunch of them here. I don't know how many, uh, but they're all back there. Um, and part of being in, part of being in, the, you know, uh, part of being up here. I was saying to somebody the other day, when one of my players was named first team All American or something, I always thought, you know, I, I think I had something to do with that. And whenever they became, you know, player of the year or got some kind of an award, I would say, I think I had something to do with that. And it made me feel really good when I watched them get an award. Well, right now, at this moment, at this point in time, this is your opportunity to sit there and look up here and say to yourselves, you know what, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be there. And you'd be absolutely right. And I've been extremely fortunate to have athletic directors uh, who really valued what we were trying to do and supported us, and college presidents who loved what we brought to the table and wanted to maximize it as, as, as much as possible. Um, and, you know, and through it all, it, it was no master plan. I, I don't think anybody has a plan. I think it's more the people you surround yourself with and how are we today? Well, we're pretty good. Well, how can we be better tomorrow? Let's do that. And then how can we be better the next day? Let's do that. And then you look up and you're here. Um, and if you're a player, it's because you had great teammates and great coaches. It's no secret, it's no secret that Joe's backcourt mate is in the Hall of Fame and his coach is in the Hall of Fame. You know, it, it's, it's not a secret that when you're a great player, you probably play with other great players. And if you're a coach, you probably coach great players. And that's how we end up here. We set ourselves up by the people we surround ourselves with. My assistants through the years, um, you know, going way back to, you know, Steve Segrist and Alan Clark and, um, you know, Megan Patterson and Wendy Davis and all these people that came to the office every day and wanted us to get better. And the ones that I have now that have been with me for such a long time, uh, Tanya Cardoza and Jamel Elliott and Chris Daly and Jack Eisman, uh, they've been together for a long time. And, and <laughs> you know, as a head coach, you're probably only as good as your players and your assistants. And, uh, they've been there from the beginning and, and have allowed me to do what I want to do and tell them what to do and then they go and do it and sometimes I don't know what they're doing but they do the right thing and then they tell me what they did and and then there's my family who's um, uh, who I'm very very proud of and I probably don't get a chance to say it enough how uh, uh, my children you know it's not easy living in Connecticut when your father's you know, who I am, and they have to, when we lose or when things don't go a certain way or when they do something that, you know, maybe they are affected a different way than most other kids. So uh, for my daughters, um, Jenna, who's in graduate school now, and Alyssa, who's uh, going to be on Broadway someday, and, um, <laughs> and my son, who, who loves the game of basketball probably more than anybody I know, and He'll tell you he's a lot better than I ever was, and he's right. Um, and I'm really proud of the way they've grown up and the way they handled the whole UConn thing. And, um, and my wife, Kathy, is the one who's responsible for that because I think she's taught them the right way to be. And, and she's probably been the one person that's been a constant in my life 
and the only other one would be my brother and my sister. But in the end, you're the product of your parents. And my father's not here, but my mother is. And Sandra was talking about the war. And Sandra was talking about being 12 years old and having bullets flying around. And my mother was 11. Sandra, you should talk to my mother, because your English is really good. <laughs> and when you talk to her, you'll see why your English is really good, <laughs> OK? Her Italian's really good, but your English is really good. And when you're 11 or 12 years old, and you've got to hide from the Germans and move to the hills, and you can't come back to your town because you're going to get killed, and uh, there's five people you're trying to take care of, and, and you're an adult at the age of 10 and 11. So when my players tell me how hard it is, I just laugh. They don't know what hard is. They don't know what living under those conditions is like. But because she lived under those conditions, she made sure that the compassion and the passion uh, and the love and the way we embrace people, she made sure she gave me that. She couldn't give me a lot. She made my clothes. And you haven't lived till you've gone to school wearing clothes that your mother made. <laughs> or, you know, you're having sandwiches in aluminum foil dripping, you know, oil from sausages and peppers. And so she gave me a lot of stuff. <laughs> Some bruises once in a while as well. But when I left Philadelphia for the first time, she told me two things. Work hard and make a lot of friends. And all I ever wanted from anything, this game, from friends, acquaintances, was the respect of how I do things and how I represent my family, my school, my program. And this is the ultimate sign of respect. And I want to thank all of you that made it possible. Thank you.